power! The dead? The dead ain't gotta worry about this mess. Our world... She's done. But there's a way to put her back together. So better get ready. Cause mother only knows what's out there floating on the rocks. Beasts what don't know up from down. Fragments of the old world. You bring them back. And together, we're gonna build something grand. And remember, you ain't in this alone. That's a promise. Hello everybody, I'm Zenith Rule, and this is my first impressions video on Bastion. For the past few months, I've been doing a Let's Play on the video game Bastion, which was requested by my fan Twilight Falchion. Now, when I initially started out, I wanted to do commentary for the Let's Play. However, Bastion is a very different game in the fact that it is very hard to create commentary for Bastion because every few minutes there's narration that interrupts what happens on the screen and I didn't want to talk over the narration. So right now, here are my first impressions on the game because while I've completed the main campaign, I've heard that in New Game Plus things are a little bit different and Twilight wants me to continue the Let's Play into New Game Plus. So I've already started getting footage for New Game Plus, but here are my thoughts on the initial game. First of all, this is a really good looking game. Its stylized visuals really work and set it apart from a lot of indie games that I've played before. I also really like how this game is stylized based on the perception of the character. Every time the kid gets hurt in the game, there's a visual change to dictate what's happening on screen. For example, when you get hit by a stink eye, the screen goes all blurry as if your vision is getting blurred, and I think that is a very nice touch. So visually, I think this is a very good looking game, especially on PlayStation 4, which is where I got all my footage. Now, story-wise, I'm a little bit torn on this game. First of all, I have to say I do like the presentation of this game. I like the narration, and the narration actually dictates everything you do on screen, not just what's going on in the story. So if you fall off the side of the world, like I do on many different occasions, then the narrator actually acknowledges that. When you attack enemies, the narrator acknowledges that. From what I could gather in various different articles in like Game Informer and other magazines, what they're trying to do with this game is make a player-driven narrative story. And for the most part, that really works. Because whatever you do, the narrator narrates, and that makes you feel like you're in control of the story in a certain sense. Everything you do drives the story forward, and depending on which level or which stage you choose to go to, the narration can change depending on that, and I think that's fantastic. When I first started this game, I really had to say uh, I was impressed by the style of presentation, and as I kept playing through the game, I was more and more impressed because the amount of variables that goes into something like this is quite large. There's so many different things you can do in each stage, and while everything isn't completely narrated, like there's narration every uh, few minutes or so, but when there is narration, it is very player driven, and I've come to really love that effect. The only thing that really threw me off about the story was how vague it was. Uh, while the presentation is fantastic, there really isn't too much detail involved from my playthrough. 
Now, I've heard there are some things that do get explained in a lot of the backstories. Uh, I only went through the kids' backstory area, which is kind of a side mission, uh, but you can go and learn the backstory about the kid, and I thought that was really, really cool. It gave a lot of detail about where he came from. However, um, I didn't go through the other three backstories, one of which I, I hear is only available in New Game Plus. So take this with a grain of salt. I don't have all the information just yet. This is just what I've gleaned from my first playthrough of the game. With that said, I, I do think they're very vague about the Calamity itself. We learn who started the Calamity. We learn why the Calamity happened, but we never learn what the Calamity actually was. We never learn how this world became this way. I don't really need a super specific explanation, but what I would like is just some clarity on what exactly caused this specific calamity. Like, why is the world floating? How is it kept together? There's not really a lot of specification on how the world got this way. Like I said, we know who started it, and we know the politics of why it started, um, but the exact specifics on what the Calamity is would have helped understand um, what's going on in the story, and I feel that the vagueness really hurts the story, in my opinion. Now, I did talk at length about the player-driven nature of the narration, however, the story is not player-driven. The story is always the same in my experience, however, there's a part at the end of the game where you're given two specific choices, and I do feel this kind of hurts what they were trying to do with the presentation of the game. It feels very arbitrary that at the end of it, after all that variables, all after all the player-driven story that they were trying to create, it boils down to one of four endings. And that really kind of uh, hurts the experience, in my opinion, because uh, the ending that I got was I saved one of the characters and he didn't really appear much in the ending. So it, feel, it, it felt like that choice was kind of arbitrary, in, in my opinion. And I chose to save the rest of the world. However, I never really felt the impact of the decision because after the end credits, I do not get to see the world whole again. At no point in this game do you get to see uh, the reward for going through all these stages because after the end credits, it just unlocks New Game Plus and we don't get to see the world as a whole. I, I feel that detracts from the experience in the same way the saboteur kind of detracts from uh, itself, like I said in my review, ba basically we never see a reward for our completion of all these tasks. A visual reward would alleviate so much of my frustration here because it feels like what we're doing doesn't matter. You know, I have really felt throughout the course of the game while I was playing that we would get some sort of uh, visual ending to showcase that everything was right with the world once we completed the game. But it feels a lot like um, an old school arcade style game, uh, maybe like an old Nintendo game where uh, it just says, oh hey, you won, you saved the world, good job. Uh, we don't get that really satisfying conclusion that I really wanted. They say we saved the world. They say that the Bastion can either uh, take us all to a different place or save the world. Um, but when I made that choice to save it, I don't get anything. I will go through New Game Plus and I will uh, see if anything really changes with the other two choices. Uh, but overall, I'm very dissatisfied with the ending of the game. And... I feel that hurts the story in my opinion. Uh, I still think the presentation is great and I still think the player driven uh, narration is fantastic, but the actual story of this game disappoints me uh, and I feel like they could have done a lot more 
with the story of Bastion. Now, where Bastion truly shines, though, is the gameplay. This is a very old school, like, tried and true hack and slash game. Um, but what works is that there's such a variety of different weapons to choose from uh, that you never really get bored with one thing. If you want to use melee weapons, there's a wide variety of those uh, from the sail hammer, which is my go to weapon, but there's also the machete, which is faster. Uh, there's a few other different types of melee weapons in this game, and they're all very balanced. I feel a lot of the effort went into the balancing of the weapons here, and even the ranged weapons are extremely balanced and varied. There's uh, the dual pistols, which I really like how you can use them very quickly, but you have to wait for them to reload. Uh, the fang repeater is kind of a similar concept, but it's more of a hail of arrows and uh, you just have to wait a timer for that uh, but there's also like the musket where it has a wide shot range but it takes a it takes a lot to reload and you can only shoot once uh, they, each weapon feels different and each weapon has its own identity and that's something that this game does so much better than a lot of AAA titles like, I remember playing God of War 1 and 2, and the creators tried to give us other weapons to use. Uh, and in God of War 2, they said, okay, well, we realize you didn't use a lot of the other weapons. We're going to try to make them better. And at the end of the day, I never really felt like these other weapons were worth using until God of War 3. Here, they present us with a weapon. They force us to use it for a short period of time. And we get a feel for the weapon, but they also give each weapon purpose. And the enemy variety also is another thing that I really like about the gameplay. There's so many different types of enemies, and they all fight very differently. You have to be very strategic in how you fight them, and the weapon selection really aids in that strategy because you're not always using the same type of weapons. You can choose how to approach each battle. And I always had fun trying to, to pick out which weapon would work best for each enemy type. Uh, there's also achievements tied to using each weapon in various different ways, which encourages you to branch out, use different weapons, try new things. Um, I, I didn't even try to go for these achievements uh, in my first playthrough, but I acquired some of them because a lot of these weapons are just so diverse and fun to use. So, gameplay-wise, this is where the game truly stands out. Gameplay, presentation, uh, the music of Bastion is simply fantastic. I dig my hole, you build a wall So that's my initial thoughts of Bastion right now. Um, I'm incredibly glad that Twilight Falchion donated this game. Thank you so much for this donation. Um, I am going to do a full review once I complete the game. If the endings actually uh, alleviate some of my problems, then maybe I'll change my mind on a few things. Who knows, I could be completely wrong about the way the ending is going, or I could be right and they might not explain as much, uh, but maybe I'll learn quite a bit more once I play some of the side stories. Uh, there, there's backstories of Zulf, Zia, and Rux, who is the stranger. And so those three I have not played, I'm going to play a New Game Plus, and uh, when I do my final review, I will keep those backstories in mind and I will see if this changes any of the problems that I do have with the game. 
Uh, overall, fantastic experience thus far. A few small problems, but overall, I would still play this game again. And I'm going to play this game again, so stay tuned for the second half of the Bastion Let's Play. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm Zenith Harul. Uh, again, thank you Twilight Falchion for donating the game, and I will see you guys next time. for watching the media meltdown don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more awesome videos and if you like what you see show your support on the patreon page at patreon.com slash media meltdown see you all next time on dragon book i mean the media meltdown